This is Snowman Jones, and we're going to discuss how WCW should have booked Bret Hart. First, let's take a trip in the Wayback Machine and remember when Bret Hart left the WWE immediately after the Montreal screw job, where he lost his title to Shawn Michaels in controversial fashion. The WWE actually used the opportunity to turn Vince McMahon into a heel. It launched the Attitude Era and it changed the ratings for WWE forever. Meanwhile, WCW President Eric Bischoff claimed that he signed Bret Hart to increase their roster as they added the show Thursday Thunder. Bret Hart's deal with WCW was for three years for $2.5 million a year. Although he could appear on TV, he had to wait 60 days before he could wrestle for the competing World Championship Wrestling. WCW's first misuse of Bret Hart was they had him as the special guest referee for Eric Bischoff versus Larry Zbysko, which was a horrible match and clearly just an ego stroke for WCW president Eric Bischoff. I feel like those first 60 days could have been better used if Bret would have confronted the biggest names in wrestling, like Goldberg, Hogan, and Ric Flair, even the NWO. He could have also used the time to start recruiting a new Canadian team to replace the Hart Foundation. If I was booking, I would have had Bret Hart claim he was finding the best technical wrestlers from around the world, and they all happened to be from Canada for his new stable. First he'd go after Chris Benoit, who happened to be part of the Four Horsemen, which would piss off the Four Horsemen and start a feud between the two stables. The next recruit would have been Lance Storm. Although Lance was in ECW at the time, he was on his way to WCW, and he would have been a perfect partner for Bret Hart, Bret who was great on the microphone, and Lance who was a great technical wrestler. Jim Neidhart and British Bulldog also came to WCW in 1998, so I would have used them to round out the group. So take a look, here's the faction I would have assembled to surround Bret Hart. And their first feud would have been with Ric Flair and the Four Horsemen. The catalyst to the feud would have been Benoit's defection to Team Canada, and the payoff match would have been Bret Hart versus Ric Flair. I would have wasted no time establishing Team Canada as anti-American heels, and then put them in a feud with the NWO which I would have turned babyface because it was due by then. So Hogan, Hall and Nash would have taken on Benoit, Bret Hart, and British Bulldog. By 98-99, the NWO was probably due for a babyface push and a changeup, and Team Canada would have been just the catalyst they needed. The big payoff match is truly Bret Hart versus Hulk Hogan, and everyone wanted to see it. In real life, Bret Hart's run in WCW was absolutely deplorable. Nothing was entertaining about it, and he was completely underutilized. I would have booked him as the main event attraction on Thursday Thunder, primarily bringing people to that show to see Bret Hart. And by 1998-1999, he would have had a feud with Bill Goldberg, where Goldberg would have ran through the rest of Team Canada to face Bret Hart in the main event of a pay-per-view. I think everybody looks upon Bret Hart's time in WCW as wasted. So that's how I would have booked him. I would have booked him around a faction just like the Hart Foundation in Team Canada, and I think he would have done amazing against the Four Horsemen, the NWO, and then Bill Goldberg. How would you have booked Bret Hart? Go ahead and leave your comments below. We'd love to hear from you.